Hello, it's Jacoby, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the crown that I wore to this year's Coney Island Mermaid Parade. To make this crown, you're going to need a headband. Mine was an inch thick. You can use a thicker headband, but I wouldn't recommend anything thinner than a half an inch. You'll need paper, pencil, and scissors. Wire that's thick enough to hold its shape, but thin enough to twist with your hands. A hot glue gun hot glue sticks, paint, and a paintbrush, and you'll need some fabric, something like net or lace, anything with texture and a bit of stretch to it. You'll also need pearls, and you can use spiky metal beads, or you can use old jewelry, rhinestones, any sort of embellishment that you might like. I'm using a headband that I bought at Joanne Fabrics for $1.00. I'd already glued some metal spikes to it using E6000, and when I realized I have no place to wear a pink spiked headband, I decided to use it for this project. The first thing I'm going to do is measure the wire for the spokes of my crown. I want the middle spoke to be about 6 or 7 inches long, so I'm measuring twice that length, adding about an inch to wrap around my headband, so about maybe 16 inches total, and I'm folding it in half, twisting it very tightly to the back of the headband, and then twisting it all the way to the end so it's nice and strong. had to bend it a little bit because I had a spike right in the middle, so in order to keep that middle spoke on center, I just sort of pushed it over a little bit. Now that that one's in place, I'm cutting two that are about an inch shorter and placing those equally distant from the center spoke on either side. I now have a total of seven spokes and I'm going to lay them on a piece of paper and cut out the pattern for my fabric. Now you only have to cut out half of the pattern because you can just fold your fabric in half and lay the folded edge on the edge that I'm drawing right now. I'm tracing each of the spokes, not realizing that I've missed one. <laughs> I accidentally put it on the other side. It's gonna take me a minute to catch up to myself because I'm a little bit tired when I'm making this. <laughs> I'm going to trace that invisible spoke as well, and also the curve of the headband, and then I'm going to cut it out. I want my crown to have a sort of scalloped pattern, like a mermaid tail or a fishy fin, so I'm just lightly sketching that in. I can always cut it out of my fabric and change it later, but this is just a good template to start with. I recommend buying at least a quarter of a yard of fabric. I'd get maybe half a yard just to be on the safe side, so if you mess up you have some left, and you can use the extra fabric for your mermaid bra or your bracelet or whatever, but a quarter of a yard should be enough to at least get your pattern cut out. Now that I have it cut out, I can lay my crown on top, and I'm going to line up each of the spokes to each of the peaks. When I've done that, I'm going to just kind of stick the tip of the wire underneath the fabric and fold it over so that it's held in place while I glue everything down. This is where I finally realize what I've done. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, whoops, I have an extra one on the other side. You should have a total of seven spokes, one in the middle and three on either side. Once you figure that out, you are good to go. So now that I have everything basically held in place, I'm holding down the bottom of the fabric with my thumb, and I'm putting a generous amount of hot glue up the back of the middle spoke. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the front. 
after I glue in the middle spoke, I'm going to glue in the two on the outside edge just to make sure that the fabric is stretched properly. So I do the middle one, then the outer ones, and then I can do the ones in the middle and know that my fabric is going to fit. Once I've done that, I'm gluing the bottom of the fabric to the headband, and I'm also repeating the scalloped pattern along the back side. Once you start painting, the hot glue is going to really pop and the texture of it is going to look very cool. So you can use hot glue for more than just holding things on. Now that everything is secure, I've decided that I want the scallops to be a little bit deeper and the peaks to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going in with scissors and just cutting the fabric to my liking. This does not have to be perfect. I picked out a fabric that has kind of an irregular pattern so that it all looks very natural and rough and organic. I want it to look like I found a really beautiful piece of coral, which I then broke apart and fashioned into a crown. So this is just adding more texture and more of an organic look. You'll also notice that I've bent the wire on the very end into a loop and glued it back in on itself. This helps to keep the fabric taut. I can now pull it down, I can pull it back, I can bend the wires into more of a 3D shape because it was looking really flat before. After that, you'll want to take your hot glue and add a bead all along the edge of the cut fabric. I'm doing this again because it's really going to help with the stability of the crown and also add another layer of texture that's going to look really great when it's painted. Now, at this point you can choose to paint the hot glue that you've already put on the crown or you can keep adding more. I already know the basic pattern that I'm going for, so I am just gonna keep on going because I think I am confident enough that it's gonna look like what I want it to look like. But you might wanna just stop and paint and then decide if you want to keep going. I'm starting from the center of each spoke and I'm drawing a pattern kind of like the branches of a tree from the center of the wire all the way to the top edge of the crown. I'm also going in and drawing some other interconnected lines so it looks even more like a piece of coral. I'm also starting from the center of the spoke and repeating that scalloped pattern at the base of the headband. So all the way down to the bottom of the headband and then all the way back up to the next spoke of wire. Okay, now it's time to paint. I've already painted the headband, so it's not quite so pink, but there's a little bit of pink showing through, a lot like the inside of a shell. I'm using Martha Stewart Multi-Surface Pearl Paint. It goes amazingly over hot glue, and it actually stays on really well. I was kind of surprised. Um, you want to make sure not to paint over any sequins if you have those in your fabric like I did, but just try to keep the paint on the hot glue. Get as much of it as you can so that you don't have any plasticky bits showing. Now, Lucky Me found an applique that had these strings of pearls with little flute beads and iridescent beads on the end, so I'm going to add those to my crown for just another layer of texture. If you can't find something that looks like this, it's really easy to make. Just take a needle and some thread, string on a pretty bead, add pearls or flute beads as you like, and make sure that it matches the length of your crown. I'm gluing mine in between each of the spokes, so I'm removing the pearls that I don't need, taking the end of the thread that's left, and I'm going to thread that through the base of my crown.
once I've threaded that through and pulled it through to the other side, I'm going to hot glue that down and then I'm drawing a line of hot glue up to the top of the crown and pushing that down, getting as many of the beads in the hot glue as possible. I recommend going up the back of your strands with some more hot glue. You can either then push the leftover string into that glue or you can just cut it off. But at this point it should be nice and sturdy. Those beads aren't going anywhere. Now I'm using a white glue stick with some glitter in it to glue pearls to the front of the headband. Keep in mind you don't have to make your crown the same color. Whatever color you're making it, try to find hot glue sticks that are in that color or glitter glue sticks, something that adds more texture, more dimension, and saves you the trouble of having to paint over the beads. This way I can just push the beads down into the glue and let the glue show and it doesn't matter. Make sure that you work in small increments, I'm going about an inch at a time. That way I have time to pick up any fallen beads or add more, push them into place and adjust them before the glue dries. So this next part is totally optional. But if you know me and you know my designs, I will find an excuse to put metal studs or spikes on anything, especially something that's supposed to be dainty and pretty. So I'm taking some spikes that I had left over from another project. I have two short ones that are gold and a long silver one in the middle, and I'm just tying them all together. I'm going to feed them through the crown at the base and glue them down just like I did my pearl strands. Once I've done that, and I think I forgot to record myself gluing them down, but make sure you glue yours down. You want to flip it over and glue the string on the back to secure it. I only had enough spikes left over to do a couple of clusters, so I spaced them out evenly across the crown. I think I had maybe three total. And just when you think I'm done with the spikes, I'm not done with the spikes. I found another set of another texture, another length, another color, and I'm gluing those on too. I'm not bothering to wire or thread them in because I'm using tons of glue and finding little places behind the pearls, between the pearls, to really stick them in. If you're going to do this though, don't skimp on the glue. Make sure you use plenty of glue and really bury those spikes in there. Hopefully, when I'm finished, the effect will be that of a really beautiful barnacle, or a sea urchin, or pufferfish. And for the final step, I'm painting a pale teal mixed with pearl on the top edge of my crown, also in the highlights and the shadows. I hope that this video inspires you to go out and make a crown of your very own, and if you do, send me pictures, because I want to see them. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that everything was clear. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask them in the comments section. And if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I've got a lot more to show you. Thank you and